Look at that. Wow. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I do not be expecting any bold moves. I never do. Hi everyone. This is the weather that you get in North Brittany in the middle of summer. It's the 25th of July. Midsummer. Did you see that boat going out? You'd have to be pretty desperate to willingly go out in this kind of weather. It is torrential, it is cold, I'm freezing. It is like pouring down with rain, absolutely miserable. Why anyone would willingly go out in this, I have no idea. <sighs> it's too cold to be outside. What's up? Why is our spray hood leaking? Uh, I just haven't waterproofed it. No. Literally, <laughs> I've been. You might want to get off now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been sitting it all afternoon thinking I should have waterproofed that. To the point of which, I even have the spray. Mm. It just needs another. You know, it's a five-minute job. Didn't do it. Fell off the list yesterday. Of course, it was my birthday, and we had other things. I spied you cleaning out the anchor locker on your birthday, so don't pretend you didn't have time to do something useful. What did you do on your birthday? It's a tradition. <laughs> I looked at the weather radar. This this should pass through in the next two hours. Yeah, but it's pretty heavy. I looked at it as well. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, uh, yes, there's a lot of rain. The heater on, getting the place straight. Nice afternoon. I've got loads done. Well, I've cleaned all the leather work. You have? The leather work's been cleaned yep. and steamed, and a soothing balm has been rubbed into it. That's what I need. <laughs> clean steam and a soothing balm applied. You've been such a good boy today. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a reward later you get to make me my dinner. Yeah, you can't either. Don't think I've been idle. I have been, uh, what have I been doing? I've been editing all day. Better get back to it. The other day as we came into Camaray, as we were sailing kind of around the corner, uh, we saw these beautiful, beautiful beaches and loads of people kind of walking along the, the top there. It looked absolutely amazing, it looked absolutely beautiful. So today we are going to uh, try and go and find them. I think there's a coastal path that we can follow. You're going to need to warm in that, that top. I'm taking a spare top. <laughs> Do you know what? I was about to go and just get a t-shirt for you and put it in my bag because I knew at some point you'd turn around to me and be like, I'm too some, hot. I'll some wet wipes to wipe my arms. <laughs> uh, ooh, that sun is bright. So today being the first nice sunny day that we've had since we got here, we are going to take advantage and go and try and find those beaches that we saw. Now, do you want some zero de quarantine? Beautiful boat, isn't that? Yeah. You know, it actually feels like summer today, don't you think? It feels very summery today. Yeah. It's, it's like... a rarity. It's a rarity in Brittany. It is. It's yeah, kind of got that nice crisp feel, like morning feel to it. Exactly. But we'll all be at the sea later. We will be actually. Oh, that's so nice. 
We actually will be at the sea later. Gotta walk there first. So we've talked about this before. Yes. It's like ridiculous drop here. You wouldn't want to come back out, but walk down here like late at night after having a few drinks and lose your footing, would you? No. Nah. Crazy, I can't believe they don't have a safety barrier here. I know, but it's a harbour. What do you mean? You know, you can still tie yourself to the dock wall here, but you'd be insane to try so, but... Well, I don't think that you can, because uh, when it dries out, you'd be on a ledge. So I don't think you can. Plus there's like a, um, what is that? Some kind of pipe down there? So you can't tie up here. You used to be able to, but not now. I'm sure that someone has fallen off there and into the water. Like, it, I'm sure it has to have happened at some point. The tidal range is so huge here that sometimes it's only like a meter down. And the other day it was springs and it was, it was about, well, how many meters down do you reckon it was, Nick? Uh, it's about five to seven meters here, yeah. the tidal range. Yeah, that's a big fall. I mean, not to go on about it, but I'm just surprised. Anyway. Oh, you took a, you took a, you know, you went for Burton off that, you'd kill yourself, you'd have it in your head. Well, that's what I mean. I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but the water here is so clear. It is the clearest water I think I've seen since, I don't know, the Med? It's crazy. It's crystal clear. It's so beautiful. Unfortunately, it's also freezing cold. <laughs> that doesn't seem to stop the French who seem to go out in any weather at any temperature. But no, it's too cold for us, I'm afraid. Camaray sur mer used to be the largest crayfish port in France. These abandoned fishing boats remind us of that past industry and perhaps in another setting a row of dilapidated boats would be an eyesore. Here however the ship cemetery is a major tourist attraction and I think you can see why. There is something so majestic and beautiful about these rotting hulls. I don't know how they came to rest here or who decided to simply pull them up onto the beach and abandon them, but it's clear they've been resting here for many decades and will hopefully last many years to come. We lost? Yeah, <laughs> we're only two minutes out of the village and we're already a bit lost. Um, okay, we can either go in this direction or that direction. I think probably this direction is a little bit. Oh, right, so onward and forward. This massive consumption of French pastries, cheese, cider, and wine is not overly compatible with hiking, but I imagine that it's probably a good thing in the long run for my ever expanding waistline. I imagine that the, uh, the view from the top of this hill will be insanely beautiful. It is such an amazing, amazing set of vistas, isn't it? Very beautiful. Yeah, amazing. So, onward. Nick's just done a quick outfit change. Popped a t-shirt on. And I've just come across this amazing view after walking like just down a random road. Suddenly, this has opened up in front of me. Wow. Worth the effort, I think. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. That's a radar station. Yeah, we can see that little white building over the top yeah. there. That's a radar station. That's obviously an old fort or some kind of fortification. Yeah, it'll be an old Napoleonic one, probably. Very Cornwall, isn't it? Yeah, it does feel like Cornwall. That's exactly what it feels like. Except right there, my lover, going for a point of squam. <laughs> is that warm and sunny in French? Doombar. That's a Cornish eye, isn't it? Point of Doombar. Please, my lover. We could sail to Cornwall from here. Oh, we could, my darling. Ah, oh, beautiful. Look at that. That water looks so good. Surf break there, babe. <sighs> look, look at the lines. I know. Out. I know, they're nice, aren't they? I saw some guys in wetsuits get in yeah, the car before.
What a spectacular place. I know. This is going to be what? Top five beaches ever? Oh God, it's beautiful. I must say it's not often that I kind of pine after living on land in a house, but if I had to live in a house, one of those houses behind me up on that cliff, they would definitely tempt me. They look spectacular. Can you imagine living here with this amazing view? And in the winter, you could do all these awesome like coastal walks and have the winter swell like slamming against the shore. It would be so cool. I'd love that. Maybe one day when I'm old. <laughs> Not yet. I'm just saying that I think if I had to live in a house, one of those would probably do the job quite nicely. Alright, maybe anything else? Maybe like a gold-plated camel to kind of take you back and forth to the shops? No. no. Just, I just fancy living on the coast. Well, we live on the coast. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, what are the... my rod. <laughs> a massive rod. So, tell me about these bunkers. Well, they're defensive positions. They're probably, they're, they'll be German for the Second World War, because this was a German-occupied thing. So, you've got these pretty strong reinforced bunkers. They'll have artillery in. There'll be submachine guns and there'll be artillery. So, to take out naval ships coming in. And they're all linked with, there'll be a, a trench system where they're all linked. Um, and there'll be like a, there's normally a further trench um, back, which is a communications trench. And that's it. So there you go. They get to look out to the Atlantic Ocean. But these things are like super thick. I think the concrete's a couple of meters thick. But how would they actually like defend their position? Like presumably from ships. So there, it's a defensive position. It's not. It's it's not an offensive thing. So what happens is if they see ships on them, I mean the guns in there are bloody. They're massive, baby. Right. They're like. You know, they'll sling shells a couple of three miles. Right. So, yeah, the, 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 gun, the gun batteries will try and take out naval ships. And then, obviously, there's like, there'll be smaller pillboxes with machine guns in. Germans made really good defensive positions. Mm. French in the Maginot line, not so much. So they just got these massive guns. If you watch Saving Private Ryan, yeah, long you'll see exactly, you will, exactly you know, how difficult these, th these beachheads were to storm. And this would be even more difficult. Mm. You know, Normandy's relatively flat and there's cliffs at the end. This is just cliffs. And it's only, I think, Omaha Beach that's got cliffs. I think Juno and Sword were just like, you walked ashore. There you go. There you go. So, but there weren't any battles here that we know of? Not that we know of, because the invasion, the invasion came from uh, Normandy. And yeah. The landings were in Normandy. I don't think, I don't think there was ever a risk or they, it, I don't think the Germans ever thought it would come from here. Mm. The coast is too wild, it's too far, and it's too difficult to land on. Mm. I think that the three places they, they thought the Pas de Calais was one, and the other one was, I think they thought they, Norway. And again, military historians will comment down below to tell us exactly where, but um, I don't think Brittany was ever, ever, you know, they ever thought it would happen here. Mm. But nonetheless, you know, you have to get to get. You know, you you have to sail sail the fleet past at some point. So the entire coastline's uh, fortified. Even you know, down in Belle Isle, there were pillboxes. But these these bunkers are obviously for like psh, firing big guns. Okay, today's not a filming day, but when the sunset looks like that, you get the camera out. So beautiful. <laughs> Stop it. You hurt yourself. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you will hurt me because you'll drop me. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Camaray really is one of those special places that pulls you in and doesn't let go. 
We spent over a week tucked into the little marina here and we would have liked to stay a lot longer. Camaray is almost a mandatory stopover for sailors going between North Brittany and South Brittany as it is situated between the two tidal races on this peninsula, the Ra de Seine and the Chanel du Four, both of which require advanced planning to time your passage with the tides. Often, sailors only spend one or two nights here in their rush to get either north or south, but if they were to stay longer as we did, well, perhaps they'd never leave. Certainly, we didn't want to. However, with only a few weeks left before we had to leave France due to immigration restrictions and the rise of COVID cases in the country once again, we forced ourselves to turn our attention north. It's creaking lines. The lines are creaking. Anyway, uh, we've got a present. I like presents. We've got new life jackets. We've had um, spin lock deck vests for a long while, but they're just, I think after seven years of uh, wear and tear, there's a little bit of mold on them. And I think probably about time to, to kind of move on and um, get some new ones. And we've got new life jackets delivered. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Full disclosure, those spin lock life jackets were always, in my view, very heavy and uncomfortable. I never enjoyed wearing them. So I'm excited. My th obviously, I want these new life jackets to be safe, but I'm interested to see whether they're more comfortable or whether life jackets like inherently have to be uncomfortable. All right, well, let's, let's jump to it, eh? Yeah, let's jump to it. That's what I want. Try to slice through them. <laughs> I'm assuming these are like the biodegradable ones. Yeah. Nothing. Oh, here we go. Eco packaging. So, which colour do you want? Obviously, the pink one. <laughs> what? They taste like chips. I think <laughs> they're made of like potato. Eco beans are manufactured from GM free sustainable raw materials. Right. You're not allowed to <laughs> eat the packaging. Yeah, well, there's dinner. <laughs> We've talked about this. <laughs> oh, dear. Hang on. See how these have to be lengthened, my love? Yeah, I thought I'd be small enough that I can just put them on, but obviously they're made for like really miniature people. Have a look. Let me just check them out. We'll get to wear these tomorrow. I'm actually going to do a long sail through the Chanel de Four, so we need life jackets. Um, and then we'll be crossing the English Channel, which is another need for life jackets. And apparently these do take the AIS transponders. So um, we'll have to get those fitted as well. And I'll go and adjust myself for later. Actually, really, really warm today, and therefore we're going to go down the beach. Possibly go for a swim. Oh god, that feels really lovely underfoot. Cannot wait. Listen to me. <laughs> do not be expecting any bold moves. Right? Any bold moves. <laughs> I never do. If you splash me, I will hold you under till you stop squealing. <laughs> you don't look very happy. Honestly, do you know what a giraffe looks like? Oh, you know they've got those two little bumps on top of their heads that aren't ears? That's what my nuts are doing. <laughs> no, we just need to get used to it. Hang on, I just took my sunglasses off. Wow, I'm going to show you guys my polarized lenses. Ready? Well, I think that, look, you had to make a decision at some point. Look, voila, in you get. It's icy, it must be like, yeah. what do you reckon? It's less than 10 degrees. This is cold and this is cold in Adelaide. Right, one, two, three, <laughs> <laughs> you look miserable. <laughs> look, despite trying for a good year now, I don't think my body fat's high enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you've been putting some solid effort in that <laughs> Turn out the effort on increasing body mass. <laughs> <laughs> 